What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out the worst hell in the cell. I think a lot of you guys can already know, will already tell what's the worst hell in the cell. Uh, this is by Superkick Studios. Easily the hell in the cell that just kind of really put a, a, a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths is the hell in the cell between Seth Rollins and The Fiend. Just one of the worst booking decisions WWE has ever done. But we're going to get into it. Should be a good video. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's get right into this debacle. Oh, man. In 1997, WWE debuted the Hell in a Cell, a 16-foot structure designed to keep competitors inside, and simply put, the Hell in a Cell became a house of iconic moments and memories. Mm -hmm. Who could ever forget mankind eating not one, but two huge bumps that could have gone so very bad. At King of the Ring 1998, he met The Undertaker, who first threw one of the best Hell in a Cell, if not the table, best Hell in a Cell ever, potentially. And then somehow, ever, after not meeting his demise, climbed back up the cell, and he got choke slammed through the panel. The match was designed for no escape, but when escapes did happen, it led to barbaric shenanigans and a ton of crazy moments. Mm -hmm. Over the coming years, the Hell in a Cell became dominated by Triple H and The Undertaker, and it got a reputation as a rivalry ender. This was where blood feuds ended once and for all, no mm -hmm. excuses, no bullshit. The height of the cage changed from 16 feet to 20 feet, and the matches in the early 2000s were quite enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But then something happened. In 2009... WWE made Hell in a Cell a standalone pay-per-view. And that's where it went horribly wrong. Once they did that, I was like, oh, fuck. The quality of them went down. We've had some good ones recently. It's funny, since we're talking about Seth Rollins and The Fiend, Seth Rollins has been in the last few that were great. Seth Rollins versus Cody, Seth Rollins versus Edge. Those were great. Seth Rollins versus Fiend? Awful. Which basically meant that every time October rolled around, they folded on rivalries and they just went, yup, it's October, we need some attraction match, let's make two of them, throw two rivalries in the cage, and let's just get this over with. Mm -hmm. Before, the Hell in a Cell match would only be brought out sparingly and under certain circumstances, but now... They started to overdo it. When you have something good and you overdo it, you run the risk of a lot of things, mainly the concept losing importance, parody, and fans failing to care. Yeah. WWE's done this with a lot of different pay-per-views. Hell in a Cell, Money in the Bank, TLC. At one point, they attempted to make Fatal 4-Way work. I think we all know how that went. Mm -mm. Regardless, the show kept going on, and iconic moments became few and far between. The barbaric and rough nature of the match started to trend downwards mm -hmm. until, in my opinion, we got the swing one song to hell in a cell the end of the era hell in a cell that was one of the better ones we had seen since it was oversaturated that shit was fun great one of the best reddit wrestlemania matches wrestlemania 28 when undertaker met triple h these two helped define the hell in a cell match and it made sense because the match of mania it was story driven it was mm -hmm. intense it had stakes and it was ending a rivalry once and for all this was only going to end once someone tapped once someone got pinned or in the worst case scenario someone was rendered so useless that they just couldn't get up and the cell it was your playground let your imagination run free and do whatever you want uh, okay maybe Maybe not that. Yeah, By not 2018, that. <laughs> the Hell in a Cell changed colors from this rusted metallic gray to red. And 2018 was also the year where we saw a non-finish when Brock Lesnar broke down the mm -hmm. door in a match between Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. And that brings us to the year 2019 in the oh, WWE. Oh, boy. This year was a pretty up and down year for the WWE. NXT was firing on all cylinders, ready to go head to head with AEW. Kofi Mania was a great storyline. Becky Lynch's rise was fun. But we gotta talk about one man, and that one man is Seth Rollins. See, since about WrestleMania 34 in 2018, Seth Rollins had been carrying Raw as the Intercontinental Champion, as mm -hmm. legitimately the workhorse of the brand. He brought the Intercontinental Championship back to prominence while Brock Lesnar wasn't on WWE TV. And through his stories, through his exceptional matches, through his promo ability... Seth Rollins was that guy, bro. He's still that guy. It's crazy. All these years later, Seth Rollins is still that guy. On Monday Night Raw, I love to see it. He made it feel special all over again. His IC title run was fun, and he had some big stories. So naturally, by 2019, it was time for him to take the next step. 
it was time for him to bring the Universal Championship away from Brock Lesnar and back to Raw. He won the Royal Rumble, and then at WrestleMania 35, in under three minutes, he beat Brock Lesnar mm -hmm. and he brought the Universal title back to Raw. After WrestleMania, Seth Rollins had some of the most deafening crowd reactions in the world. He legitimately was alone as the guy in the company. Mm -hmm. But then WWE fumbled things big time with Seth Rollins. His first title defense against AJ Styles was great, but then they just couldn't put prominent stars in a proper position to take on Rollins because then Baron Corbin came in. Yep. And I don't think I need to tell you about Baron Corbin. How were they going to make a feud between Corbin and Seth Rollins interesting? These two had some boring and downright awful yeah. matches. And then they acknowledged Seth's relationship with Becky Lynch on screen. And Seth went from this cool, lovable, badass fighting champion to this guy who was calling himself the man's man. I, I yeah, then it, yeah. When he started doing the man's man stuff, I was like, uh oh. Uh oh. And the fans slowly but surely was like, uh, we don't like this version of Seth. I don't even know what that means. And it was just cringe and bad. Add to that that there were some outside things happening where he made comments about mm -hmm. Dean Ambrose, John Moxley, of course, taking food. Seth Rollins on SummerSlam conference call. Moxley to AEW. I was surprised by it. I knew Ambrose needed time away from WWE. Now he's competition trying to take dinner off my table. Good on him, AEW. We're going to knock them dead just like we do everyone else. Yeah, he he, he started to start putting his foot in his mouth. It, it just, oh, man. <laughs> off his table because he joined AEW. He got into a Twitter beef with Will Ospreay, and that got some fans to sour on him because he was asking Ospreay to compare bank accounts. There was yeah. a report that came out saying that they thought Seth Rollins wasn't cool, and he was basically a geek, and they were trying to make him look cool. At Extreme Rules 2019, Rollins was cashed in on by Brock Lesnar, who won the Universal title. Mm -hmm. And then WWE basically hit the reset button. They're like, all right, let's build Seth as a babyface again. We messed up this time. Maybe we can redo it and redeem ourselves. It didn't just work. Just a month later, Seth Rollins, after getting destroyed for weeks, recaptured the Universal yeah. Championship. Despite the audience not being as hot as they were pre- and post-WrestleMania, Raw was Rollins. However, in 2019, we also saw a huge character reinvention. Mm -hmm. that reinvention the Fiend, Bray Wyatt. Wyatt. And I think despite what many people think of his booking, I think it's fair to say that he has a very creative mind. And he put that mind right to work. After WrestleMania 35, vignettes started to air showing these creepy dolls. And fans Which is started great. to speculate who it was and everything pointed to Bray Wyatt. Bray had just missed his first WrestleMania since making his debut. Well, as the weeks wore on, we saw Bray Wyatt debut this character as a happy-go-lucky kids TV presenter, something like Mr. Rogers, and it was known as the Firefly Funhouse. So creative, so jingle, dope. It had its own set of characters. He had a catchphrase where he would say yowie wowie, which immediately became popular. But this playful, seemingly harmless gimmick took a turn and became dark when Bray took a chainsaw mm. to a cardboard cutout of himself, saying that he now knows how to harness his anger. Now we saw the debut of his split persona known as The Fiend. With this mangled mask and this new creative flair behind him, fans so were excited cool. to see what he could do. He attacked Finn Balor and at SummerSlam 2019, we were going to get his debut and his debut was a 10 out of 10. It's fucking someone who good. was actually in the arena... I can tell you that this was something that had everyone hooked. And I, I remember doing a reaction to it. I was just, the music, the entrance. I was just like, oh, this is this is something. This was something. This was something cool. I was like, I'm for this. WWE, you can't fuck this up. Can you, right? Right? Just in awe. The cryptic remix of his theme music, his look, the mystique, and even a lantern. Fans went wild once they saw this new supernatural character. Let me he in. squashed Finn <laughs> Balor, and this character went viral. And I mean viral. People were amazed at what they had just seen. After all, what we watch in the WWE is a TV show, and TV shows are driven by characters. And fans in the WWE knew that they had their next big character-based attraction right there. The Undertaker was basically done, and now it was time for someone to take over that role. Mm -hmm. And who better than Bray Wyatt, who had had an up-and-down path in the WWE so far, but everybody knew his true potential as a main eventer. 
The company seeing the popularity fast tracked him right away at the end of Clash of Champions. Seth Rollins had just beaten Braun Strowman after stomping him to, I don't know, control your narrative maybe. So with Hell in a Cell as the next WWE pay-per-view. And I think this is where they made a mistake. They shouldn't have fast tracked him. They should have just let him keep building, keep building. Because his character is not like anything else. It's not the same. He comes off very menacing, can take a lot of damage type stuff. So if you're going to build him up, they fast tracked him too quickly. Because if you wasn't going to give him the title when he faced Seth Rollins, then you shouldn't have set up the match. Because everyone wanted to see him as champ. Seth, Steph, Seth stock was, was plummeting. Bray's was increasing at an exponential rate. We all knew the direction. It was going to be Bray Wyatt versus Seth Rollins Universal Championship inside Hell in a Cell. Weeks of build and Bray sending cryptic messages to Seth Rollins. And that brought us to Hell in a Cell 2019. Oh, and boy. this show put the hell in Hell in a Cell. It's funny that this show was presented by WWE 2K20. The worst wrestling game in quite some time. Because this... This was not good. Coming in, there were only four matches announced for the show, and it was a busy time for the WWE. NXT was going live. SmackDown was premiering on Fox. Kofi was getting squashed. Yeah. So it's like they forgot about this show, and last minute, they just threw a whole bunch of matches together. The opening match was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Sasha and Becky inside Hell in a Cell for the Raw Women's Championship. And the rest of the card was mainly forgettable. But we came to talk about the main event, Rollins and the Ooh. Fiend. The duration of the match had this blood red light shining down on the cage. The Which I didn't like. And Bray and Seth go right after each other. Rollins the, the red, I hate when they did that with the Fiend shit. It was, it was taken away from the match. You could barely see. Like, it was just, it was too distracting. Should have just... You got the red cell, you might as well just keep the normal lights. Goes for a candlestick, and Bray just no-sells about three candlestick shots. So far, so great. It makes sense. The whole story of a normal human versus this freak of nature having to dig down deep to find a way to put him down. That's a story. It makes sense. And then Bray takes over. He throws Seth Rollins all over the cell, mm -hmm. into the steps, onto the floor, and the crowd is actively engaged in this match. Because mm -hmm. even though the lighting may have sucked, they wanted to see who would end up winning. Rollins has Bray down by hitting him with steel steps, frog splash, and still nothing for Rollins. And then Bray just no-sell stomps from Seth. Before yeah. Bray brings out this ginormous, what do I even call A this? Mallet. Circus comedy mallet. And he hits Rollins with it. Meanwhile, on commentary, Dio Madden, or Mosse, whatever the hell that is, says that Rollins almost got impaled. So keep in mind, he's just brought out this huge mallet, way larger than a sledgehammer, way bigger than a kendo stick, way bigger than, well, a lot of things, and they get back into the ring. And here's where shit starts to hit the fan. They make their way back into the ring, Rollins spams some flying knees, spams some super kicks, he's got all the cheats in this match, <laughs> three curb stomps, a pedigree, a fourth stomp, and still nothing. So that's five stomps Bray has taken, and he kicks out at and one. And that's where they fucked up at, too. You're making him invincible. He took all those finishers. It's like, wait a minute. Hold on. What? How you taking four curb stomps and a pedigree, and you still get up? What's going on? Curb stomp number six, curb stomp number seven, curb stomp number eight, curb stomp number nine, curb stomp number ten. Still nothing. And we're all thinking that Bray's got to get up sometime soon. But he just lays there and he takes this beating and the crowd is getting restless. And then Rollins goes to the outside, hits a work chair shot to the Fiend's head, mm -hmm. kicks out. Gets a ladder, smashes it onto Bray's face, nothing. So Rollins is like, all right, I need to dig deeper. Grabs a toolbox, piles up all this stuff onto Bray, hits him with a toolbox, and Bray again is just lying there. And this match has drastically taken a wrong turn. Mm -hmm. Bray laying motionless, and Seth goes to get a sledgehammer, which let's keep in mind, the sledgehammer is the signature weapon of Triple H, who's used this on so many different occasions, not just inside Hell in a Cell, yeah. but in normal matches. Also, the sledgehammer in shape is much smaller than the mallet that Bray just used, what, six minutes ago? <laughs> Rollins gets the sledgehammer with all this stuff piled on top of Bray, chair, toolbox, ladder, and the ref's yeah, just like, no, 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 Seth, don't do this. Do not do this, please. I'm begging you, don't do it. Don't hit Bray Wyatt with a hammer 
that is smaller <laughs> than the hammer that he just used on you. Oh because my why? god! Because of logic. And yeah. Seth's thinking about it. Seth's like, okay, okay, maybe, maybe I shouldn't do this. But then he's like, fuck this, man. Seth swings the sledgehammer not onto Bray Wyatt, but onto the to- rubble that he's laying beneath. Yeah. And the ref calls for the bell, and the crowd is pissed. I've never seen that in the Hell in a Cell. I've never. When I saw that, I was like, what the fuck? It did what? Did what? What, bro? It just never made sense to me, bro. Oh my God, bro. They are losing their shit. This was the match where mankind fell to his death <laughs> not t- once, but t- twice, twice. <laughs> in one match. A match where we had seen things way more violent than this one. This one ended in a no contest. Because one guy used a hammer and didn't even hit the guy. Yeah. What the f*** did I just watch? The crowd is showering Rollins with booze so loud you think he's 2015 Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. And then Bray gets tended to by EMTs. There's like seven refs out there and Seth Rollins is just possessed. And just as they're about to stretcher the fiend out, he gets up, hits a mandible claw on Seth Rollins, followed by a sister Abigail. All the while, the crowd is chanting, restart the match. Yeah. This show goes off the air with Rollins getting a mandible claw and spitting out blood. So basically, both guys were fine, and they just called for a no contest Which because they stupid. booked themselves into a corner. So stupid. This was bad, and it will forever be one of the most infamous finishes in WWE mm-hmm. history. This shit single-handedly ruined the credibility of Hell in a Cell. Yep. It actually would have made more sense if Bray got stretchered out, but he, he, he was fine. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with him. Online, the reaction was horrible, but we'll get to that in a second. At the show, people were losing their shit in Sacramento. They were booing this into oblivion. They yep. were chanting bullshit. They were chanting for refunds. They were chanting for AEW. The mm-hmm. match where Jericho took a pedigree at the top of the cage. The match where Mick Foley died twice, as I've mentioned before. The match where Mick Foley again got to live out his fetish by getting killed. By <laughs> the match Facts. where Rikishi did it for The Rock and fell into <laughs> punches ended because of a tool. Think about that. People there melted. They were pissed. What made things worse was Brazzers then took to Twitter to put more salt in the wound and they said, hey, WWE, let us know if you need advice on how to craft logical and coherent <laughs> storylines with satisfying finishes. This match is so funny. That's way. funny, like bro. article of wrestling. Things went so, so bad and they could have just been avoided altogether. Yeah. One of the worst received matches of all time. After this, Seth Rollins dropped the universal title to the fiend three weeks later but it was three weeks too, too late, late. Yep. the audience directed the hate towards rollins and then he took to twitter to say this which made things imagine Mick and taker might have like the the ref to stop the match there might have added a few more years to mix incredible career career just a thought nah bro just go ahead and hang that shit take that out bro. even worse and this year for him i don't even know what to say Rollins was damaged twice in the same year. And it's not like he hasn't recovered from this booking. The fans caused him to turn heel in 2020, and he's carried so many feuds despite losing most of them. For Bray Wyatt, he became the Universal Champion, and Daniel Bryan was able to bring the best out of him. Mm -hmm. But they strapped themselves with the character. The thing is, they should have used him as an attraction and not a constant. There we go. They failed to make a lot of people get reinvested in the Bray Wyatt character. And the rise and fall of the character is a video for another day. But they never captured that lightning in a bottle again. No. He didn't ever recover. Sure, he had rivalries. Sure, he built a cult following. The Firefly Funhouse match was cool. But if you turn the clock back to that day in the summer of 2019 where so many people were just in awe, we never got back to that. And it is pretty sad because WWE let that slip away. Mm -hmm. All in all, WWE stunted the momentum of what could have been their biggest character in years by putting him into a match that he did not need to be in. And on the other end, their most over babyface by simply having no one for him to feud with on the heel side. That meshed with his inability to keep his mouth shut and his yep, <laughs> that to too. Himself, <laughs> led him to become the most liked and hated man in the same year. Did we overreact in hindsight? Yeah, yeah, we did. But I think a lot of us just want things to be good. If you care, you're going to want to voice your opinion about Mm -hmm. it. And your opinion is what I want to hear. All these years later, what do you think? Easily. Worst Hell in a Cell ever by WWE. They ruined two characters that night. 
The Fiend was never the same. Seth was never the same. The match was never the same. Uh, there was people saying, I don't ever want to see this match ever again. Or at least for a very long time. And uh, uh, I will say this. I will say this, man. Seth Rollins has been able to reinvent himself. And now he is easily, without a doubt, the most over, one of the most over people in WWE right now. He is fantastic. And he needs to keep doing what he's doing. The Fiend, I know people want him to come back. I, I bring up this point. It only makes sense for him to come back if they're going to use him correctly. If not, he needs to stay doing what he's doing. I don't want him to come back to be in the same situations. But it's different now because Triple H is in control. So I do think if he was to come back, I think they would do him justice. But he should have never been put into this match so quickly. He should have never even been thought about for the title. You want to know why? Because his character, his gimmick doesn't really need the title. Does it? Does it? Would it have been cool for him to get it at some point? Yeah, but his his gimmick doesn't need that. He's one of these guys that it, whoever was to be, have beaten him at some point, they would have got a made they would have got a major push from him. But hey, that's Vince McMahon for you, man. So comment down below. Let me know. Do you, let me know. Do you guys think this is the worst Hell in a Cell ever? Because I honestly think it's easily the worst Hell in a Cell ever in history but i appreciate all the love and support road to 100k appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace